The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Let me start by basically listing the main things we've learned over the past three weeks or so. And I'll add a few complements of information about that because there's a few small details that I didn't quite clarify and that I should, you know, probably make a bit clearer, especially what happened at the very end of yesterday's class. So, here's a list of things that should be on your review sheet for the exam. So the first thing we learned about, the main topic of this unit, is about functions of several variables. So we've learned how to think of functions of two or three variables in terms of plotting them, in particular, well, not only the graph, but also the contour plot, and how to read a contour plot. And we've learned how to study variations of these functions using partial derivatives. So remember, we've defined the partial of f with respect to some variable, say, x, to be the rate of change with respect to x when we hold all the other variables constant. So if you have a function of x and y, this symbol means you differentiate with respect to x, treating y as a constant. And we've learned how to package partial derivatives into a vector, the gradient vector. So for example, if we have a function of three variables, that's just the vector whose components are the partial derivatives. And we've seen how to use the gradient vector of the partial derivatives to derive various things such as approximation formulas. So the change in f when we change x, y, and z slightly is approximately equal to, well, there's several terms. And I can rewrite this in vector form as the gradient dot product, the amount by which the position vector has changed. Okay, so basically what causes f to change is that I'm changing x, y, and z by small amounts, and how sensitive f is to each variable is precisely what the partial derivatives measure. And in particular, we can use, so this approximation is called the tangent plane approximation because it tells us, in fact, it amounts to identifying the graph of a function with its tangent plane. It means that we assume that the function depends more or less linearly on x, y, z, and if we set these things equal, what we get is actually we are replacing the function by its linear approximation. We are replacing the graph by its tangent plane. Except, of course, we haven't seen the graph of a function of three variables because that would live in four-dimensional space. So when we think of the graph, that's really with a function of two variables. Um, that also tells us how to find tangent planes to level surfaces. So, recall that the tangent plane to a surface given by the equation f of x, y, z equals c at a given point can be found by looking first for its normal vector. And we know that the normal vector is actually, well, one normal vector is given by the gradient of a function because we know that the gradient is actually pointing perpendicularly to the level sets, 
towards higher values of a function. It gives us the direction of fastest increase of a function. Okay, any questions about these topics? No? Okay, so let me add actually a cultural note to what we've seen so far about partial derivatives and how to use them, which is maybe something I should have mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so why do we like partial derivatives? Well, one obvious reason is we can do all these things. But another reason is that really you need partial derivatives to do physics and to do, actually to understand much of the world that's around you because a lot of things actually are governed by what's called partial differential equations. Okay, so that's, if you want, a cultural remark about what this is good for. So, a partial differential equation is an equation that involves the partial derivatives of a function. Okay, so, you have some function that's unknown that depends on a bunch of variables and a partial differential equation is some relation between its partial derivatives. So, let me see. These are equations involving the partial derivatives. of an unknown function. So let me give you an example to, say, to see how that works. So for example, the heat equation is one example of a partial differential equation. It's the equation, well, let me write, you, write for you the space version of it. It's the equation partial f partial t equals some constant times the sum of the second partials with respect to x, y, and z. 